Welcome, welcome. I'm going to talk to you today about whether or not you really should let the music speak for itself. I have my answer to that. I'm very curious to hear what your answer is. Um, and I really find this topic to be very interesting because it is something that it is talked about a lot. I can see that conversation come up um, with all of my friends, with all of the people that I have worked with so far um, in a professional context as a holistic coach in the past six years. But in my 20 years of being in the music industry, this is really something that has come up a lot. Um, whether, you, you know, you hear this from an A&R at a label, um, a booking agent, a club promoter, a club owner, um, or a DJ producer, musician, um, let the music speak for itself is a sentence, or the music should speak for itself um, is even stronger, is a sentence that I've heard many, many times. And um, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up or drop me an emoji below, whether you're watching me on Instagram or on Facebook Live um, or on the replay, drop me an emoji below uh, if you have heard this sentence as well. So you should let the music speak for itself. Drop me an emoji below if that is something that you have heard um, talk about in the past as well. And then I would love for you to let me know in the comments below if you agree with that or not. Just say yes or no. I'm just really curious to hear your, your perspective on this. Now, the reason why I wanna talk about this topic is because first of all, I think that statement is bullshit. I don't think you should let just let the music speak for itself. And I will explain to you in a minute why. Um, but, the reason why I really chose this topic today is because um, this week I'm running a free training, Five Mistakes DJs and Producers Make, when it comes to landing gigs or releases. And one of those five mistakes is actually that statement. You should let the music speak for itself. Um, and not necessarily because it's a statement, but because it's a belief that is only making you give your power away. Again, I will dive a little bit deeper into this in a minute, but bear with me here. I'm just trying to frame the conversation. It's giving your power away when you say you should let the music speak for itself, or it's actually giving power away in general, not necessarily your own power, but just the power in general that the artist who has made the music has, or the DJ who has made the set has. Um, and so the reason why I included this as one of the five mistakes that I see every DJ and producer make when it comes to landing gigs and releases is because I think it's really important. And from my experience, I've been working with DJs and producers for the past six years as a holistic night nightlife coach, helping, helping them get confident about their next steps so that they can move the needle and dance music. And so after six years, I have seen every DJ producer that I've worked with make these same five mistakes. Uh, whether it's just one of the five or all of the five, it doesn't matter. I've really seen these mistakes as kind of a common denominator. And most of these mistakes are really happening on a mindset level, are happening on a level of what do you believe to be true? And then as a consequence, what do you believe to be possible for you? Because if you believe in certain things, then that will also be the outcome of the possibilities that you think are possible for you. So, for example, if you are, if you don't believe fully that you can get paid, that you can be in music full time, that that can be like your full time thing and you can just live off of it, then you won't see the possibilities uh, for yourself in that area, right? And you will always hold yourself back because you don't hold the beliefs that is actually possible for you to be in music full time, just to give you an example. So, should you really let the music speak for itself? Um, both yes and no are beliefs. Uh, I believe that, and I strongly believe this, and I actually know this to be true, if your answer to that question is yes, 
then you are limiting yourself. You are limiting yourself, you're giving your power away. And it's really important first and foremost that you understand that this is happening on a mindset level. And in order for you to change the outcomes of the things that you are now experiencing in your reality, let's just say you are struggling to even get the opportunity to be booked or to get a release, then you will want to change that, right? You will want to get the opportunity to be booked um, or to be released, right? You want maybe your first or next EP to be released on a label that you love. Maybe you want to self-release your own singles and really have the confidence to do that and not give a fuck about what other people say about that. Maybe you want to be booked for more DJ gigs, right? Like, and even out of the blue, maybe you want them to come to you. You don't necessarily want to be struggling to look for them and still like hear crickets. Um, maybe you want to land an exciting uh, sync placement, like whatever that looks like for you. If you're not getting that now, then you will want to look at the mindset level, what's going on there. What are some of the thoughts that you're having? What are some of the beliefs that you're holding? And look at whether or not they are actually serving you. So awareness is going to be your first step. You have to be aware of the things that are not working for you, of the things that you would like to change first before you can take accountability for actually making those changes, right? And this is why I'm talking about, um, you know, these mistakes and one of them being thinking that the music should be, speak for itself. This is why I'm talking about these mistakes because all of these are actually beliefs that you have picked up somewhere <laughs> along, the, along the line of being in the music industry, you've picked them up somewhere. Maybe you've never really thought about them. Maybe you just thought, okay, somebody you admire um, said them and you, you just thought, okay, it must be true because so-and-so said it and I admire this person and it must be true. And so you have adopted that thought, that statement as a belief and you have come to live by that without even realizing it. So again, first step, to changing your results, to going from struggling to even get the opportunity to be booked or get releases to actually getting the releases and the DJ bookings is looking at your mindset first and foremost, right? That's step number one. Step number two is creating a bigger picture vision around what you really want for yourself instead. Step number three is taking the consistent inspired actions until the thing that you really want for yourself is actually a reality and then you can move on to the next thing and the next thing. But the first piece, the mindset piece, which consists of two steps, awareness first, accountability second, is really the entry points in actually applying all of those changes and going from struggling to get the opportunity to be booked and released to actually getting booked and released. Now, the beautiful thing is, it doesn't have to take that long for you to actually go down that road. You can actually do all of that within 21 days. And why 21 days? Well, I'm probably you've heard talk about this. It takes 21 days to change a habit and I think 90 days to make it a lifestyle. Um, it's really a great period of time, three weeks, 21 days, because, and I think it was James Clear who said this, who wrote the book Atomic Habits. 21 days is like, a short enough period to stick to something new and to actually um, keep yourself motivated to stick to the new habit. Um, but it's also long enough to be able to practice it and implement it um, and actually make it a habit, right? Because um, you won't be able to change a habit in just three days. It will take a little bit longer usually. And the reason why I'm also saying 21 days is because me personally with my clients one-to-one, -one, I have seen them get phenomenal results within 21 days and even less. And so this is why this whole process that I'm explaining to you of, you know, the mindset piece, awareness, accountability, and then creating a bigger picture vision of what you truly want, and then taking consistent inspired actions until you get the end result of getting released, getting booked within 21 days, I've actually formalized that process that I use with my clients one-to-one -one into a self-guided course. It is now um, available to you at a discounted price. So if you're watching this now until Sunday, April 18, so that's this Sunday, you can get like a special guest price, um, a special discount because you're an early adopter, one of the first people to hop into the course. 
Um, the link is actually in the description of this video. So just have a look. The course is called Move the Needle. Um, and I formalized my, my coaching process because I really feel so strongly about the the success of this process, I have seen it time and time again. I have seen some of my clients struggling with finishing tracks to actually be able to put an EP together. You, you have to have tracks, right? So I've had clients who were struggling with finishing their tracks for months, years even, to actually finishing a track within just a two hour session, you know, after working with me and after understanding my process. I've had a client and this, this person, phenomenal, phenomenal. Like I've never seen this in my six years as a coach, but I've had a client who was um, dragging out, releasing his first EP for I think more than two years even. And after learning my process, I've, after working with me, he just really managed to put it all together within just a couple of weeks. And then he set a release date for himself, which was like a bit over two months out. And then his EP was released. Um, he has his second one coming out. He actually messaged me, um, I think it was last week or this weekend. He messaged me, he has a second one coming out. He's even putting together like a virtual EDM festival. So all of a sudden he went from dragging out his release, trying to get his tracks done, um, aiming for you know having at least one track done every single week, but not getting there to, to finishing three tracks a week, just in one week, putting his EP together within just a few weeks, and then just releasing it, you know, instead of dragging it out for two years, and then actually having another one coming up as well. Um, so those are just a few results that are possible for you as well. And I wanted to share these because I think sometimes when you are, and I know this is true for me as well, sometimes when you set a goal for yourself, it's it can be really hard to believe if it's really possible if you haven't done that yet, right? So the unknown is really something that is difficult to overcome. And that usually makes us, you know, um, not do the things that we need to do in order to actually reach that goal. For example, working on finishing tracks, working on putting together a DJ mixtape so that you can actually publish it on SoundCloud so that you can get more visible as a DJ so that you can get books, right? But sometimes it's so unknown to us because we're venturing out into something new. We've never done it before. And then it can really help to kind of borrow beliefs and results from others. So this is why I'm sharing these examples with you. I have many more examples, but I'll just stick to these um, because I want you to see what is possible for you and beyond. Like, Literally, you are more powerful than you realize, and so much more is, is possible for you, even beyond your imagination. Like I said, some of my clients have really gotten phenomenal results, even beyond my imagination. Like I always envision where I know I will be able to take them, like with my assistance, with my guidance. And oftentimes they surprise even me, like beyond my imagination. That's the beautiful part of that journey. And that's why I wanted to formalize it um, in my course, Move the Needle. So it's a 21 day course. You can find the information in the description. I have a link that's put in there. The course is called Move the Needle. The beautiful thing about the course is that you will also get personal guidance from me. So we will be doing um, a weekly live call for open coaching and Q&A so that we can go through the material together and kind of get you unstuck on some of the things that maybe you will get stuck on because questions always arise when you learn something new and then you will have those weekly live calls um, with me personally to help you uh, move through them so that you can move on and actually get through the material and master it and practice it. And you will also have access to a pop-up Facebook community um, just filled with people who are on the same journey to get support and especially to get accountability. Because I know for a lot of you, that's a huge issue, like staying motivated, staying inspired and having that community is definitely a big help. So definitely check out that link. It's in the description of my video. Um, and so to kind of you know, wrap this up with the topic of today. The reason why I'm giving you all of this information is because I really wanted to frame this conversation. So one of the things, as I mentioned, that I see a lot of DJs producers um, kind of default on is thinking, yeah, the music should really speak for itself. Again, this is probably not something that you truly, truly believe in your core. Um, 
but it's probably something that you have picked up from somebody that you admire or maybe a mentor or you've heard a big artist say it. But I want to kind of debunk this because this is really holding you back. This is taking your power away, right? Because of course you want the music to be good. Of course a label is only going to release something that they think is of the highest quality and that fits their sound. Of course, as a DJ, you're going to be booked by somebody who actually likes what you do, or at the very least thinks that it will fit in the rest of the lineup, right? So duh, like let the music speak for itself in a way that this is so subjective. What you think is good and worthy of being released or being played is maybe totally different from what I think is good. But that doesn't mean that this, is, this has to limit your possibilities because if you let the music speak for itself, then who is going to speak for you? Because you are that music, you are the source of that music. Whatever it is that you're doing, whether you are a DJ putting sets together, you are the source of that sound. You are unique. There is nobody out there like you who would put it together exactly in the way that you do it. And the same goes for producers. You are the source of your music. So obviously, if you're going to send it out there, you are going to be dependent on subjective tastes, right? But that does not mean that you should just kind of let it fly and hope that somebody will like it, somebody will pick it up, and then yes, you will get a possibility, an opportunity to get released or get booked. No, no, like your music is part of you. So you have to speak for yourself and you have to speak for your music. You need to learn to convey your, your identity, your story, your brand, whatever you want to call it. You need to learn how to connect with the right people for you so that you can really build an emotional connection with them. Because that is really the only way that your music is really going to be picked up and get out there. It's the same with fans. It's the same with followers. They continue to come to your online space whichever social media channel that you're using because they have some sort of an emotional connection to you and by extension to your music they like your music but that also has a that also is a reflection of you right so for example for me when I hear a piece of music and I don't know yet who's behind it, I will do some research. I will get curious. I will be like, mm, who is this person? And really, in all honesty, if I discover something about this person that I don't like, maybe he's conveying certain ideas, beliefs, or, or worldviews that I really cannot get behind, then automatically for me, the music will really be like, meh, don't, don't really like it anymore. That's just really how it works. Like, if you really think about it, you cannot, it is impossible to disconnect the music from its creator. It is impossible. That, that's not possible. Like the music did not just appear just like that out of your Ableton or whatever it is that you're using to create your music or whatever it is to create your sets with. It did not just appear. There was a person behind that, right? And we could even argue like, you know, artificial intelligence with music like that all started with people as well. So really, should you let the music speak for itself? No, no, you should not. Of course, you're going to be able to, you are going to want to present it to people who you believe will like it. Um, and of course, then it will still be up to them to decide for themselves. In that sense, the music will have to speak for itself a little bit. But that's not the full story, because if you only let the music speak for itself, who is going to speak for you? And I've heard the sentence like, oh, no, you should just let the music speak for itself so many times. And it is shit. It is bullshit. It is just not going to get you anywhere because it's really about you and making the connections with the with the right people, with the people that you feel should hear your music, whether it's fans, a &Rs, bookers, whatever it is that you're looking to, to do, whatever it is that your, um, your goal is, it's really about who do you want to surround yourself with? Who do you want your music to have an impact on? You, you are in this, in, this, in this space of creating something and you want to have an impact. You want to feel a sense of belonging. So who do you want to belong with? Your music is definitely your kind of, um, yeah, I would say business card or 
kind of your vehicle to get you there, but it's really also about you need to speak for yourself. You need to be able to really convey your message, your identity, your brand, your personality, whatever you want to call it, so that you can actually make real connections with real people and get your music in front of the right people, the people that will be a good fit for you, your music, your personality, because you want your music to have the best tone possible right? You want the music to be on a label that you absolutely love, that you can stand behind, that you've been dreaming of all your life. We all have a label like that. Like, I mean, I'm not even a producer myself, but if I would want my music to be released, I have like a shitload of labels that I will be like, oh my God, that would be awesome. Um, and same goes for clubs or festivals. Like there's a lot of stuff out there that I'm like, oh my gosh, like if I would ever play another DJ set, it would definitely be there. Like same for my radio shows. I, I only have, you know, radio shows on stations that I absolutely love and can get behind. And, and I just did not send just my demo to the radio station. I, I spoke for myself. I explained why I thought this was so important and what sound I wanted to bring with the shows, et cetera, et cetera. So to wrap this up, I would love to hear from you, your number one key takeaway from this video. And then also, I want you to know that um, all of the things that I've been talking about now in terms of like, you know, getting your music in front of the right people, speaking about yourself, your brand, your story, whatever you want to call it. Those are all things that I'm also covering in my 21 day course, Move the Needle. Um, between now and Sunday, you have a special guest discount. So definitely check out that page that I've linked in the description. Um, or if you're watching me on Instagram, it's actually in the link in my bio. So you can check it out there as well. Um, and if you have any questions, um, again, all of the information is on the page of the course. But if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send me a DM. I will be happy to help you further. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.